I was playing around in Unreal and I realized I didn't know how to make my control rigs do post-processing. For example, how do I make my character look at something in real time? Anything I choose. How do I make my character reach out and touch something? How do I make my character's feet stick to the ground properly? I know how to do that stuff without a control rig, but I couldn't find any tutorials on how to do that stuff with a control rig. I just Maybe my Google Foo is weak, maybe there's a million of those tutorials out there, but just in case, uh, here's a tutorial. I finally cracked that open by finding a blurry screenshot 35 minutes into an unrelated video. So this is how you do it. Obviously this is just a quick little prototype, so you know don't get too upset about the quality, but basically there are three pieces to this puzzle. There's the character controller, there's the animation blueprint, and there's the control rig. Keep in mind the control rig is not in the scene. This character that I am in right now, this is just an ordinary skeletal mesh. There is no control rig involved. So the first step here is the character controller, which just like normal does most of the heavy lifting. In this case, it uses a sphere trace straight down away from the camera to try and see if there's anything worth paying attention to. And that little red box says that we found something. The character controller then does some math to determine whether we should pay attention to it, and then just saves it locally as a variable. It says, I found something, and this is what I found. The animation blueprint on the same character is now responsible for grabbing that information every frame. In case you've never seen that, this is how that looks. It looks like this. So over here in the event blueprint update animation, that's different from the animation graph. It's the event graph. You grab your, uh, your character, you cast it to the type of character it is, and then you can just get any variable on the character and uh, set it. So you just keep track of whatever you need. Here are the vectors that I grab and uh, I do a bunch of fin turping. If you're doing kung fu, like if your character is snapping their hands around or whipping their head around rather than slowly moving to the position you want them to, remember that fin turp exists. This just allows you to slow that down and smooth it around. It's invaluable to prevent kung fu. Once you've gotten to this point, the only other step is how do you pass this stuff to your control rig? Well, that happens on the animation graph. It's over here. It's this little thing called a control rig node, which maybe to you this was super obvious, but to me, wow, it was hard to find out that this node existed. But the control rig node allows you to choose what control rig you're using here. Um, and it's buggy. I can't actually scroll down far enough to see everything. There we are. So you can choose your control rig class. And then you can surface various things as pins. Now what you're going to want to be careful of here, you're going to want to surface variables. If you try to surface controls, it doesn't seem to work. And maybe that's just me misunderstanding something, but I couldn't surface the controls. I could only surface the variables. I mean, I can surface them, but it doesn't do anything. So over in the control rig, I just have a couple of variables. And by having this little eye open, it allows me to pass those variables by pin from the, the character blueprint. So that's how I do it. There are a couple of things to keep in mind here. One of the things to keep in mind is that when you're passing in those world positions, they need to be changed over into global positions. That's right, world and global are not the same. So a global position is within the control rig. It's relative to the base of the control rig. It's the control rig position whereas the world position is just in the world somewhere. So anytime you pass in a vector, you've got to make sure that you are converting it from world space into global space. Other than that, it's fairly straightforward. All I'm doing here is using a bunch of basic IK stuff. Uh, now, in my case, I'm having a hard time with scaling issues due to the way that I imported the character. So I have a little bit of extra complexity to avoid misscaling. And down here I'm using a bunch of aims. There is a chain aim node, but I couldn't get it to work, so I'm just doing each one individually, starting down on the spine and moving up to the neck, and then finally the head. Doing them in that order makes it so that they track properly. If it was in the other order, 
then the head would whip around way, way further because the head would move and then the neck would move, which also moves the head, and then the spine would move, which also moves the neck and the head. You know how it is. And uh, down here, I do a little bit of work to check and make sure that I'm not like trying to look behind me. So basically, I just take the dot product of my forward vector and the vector towards whatever I'm looking at. And that tells me whether or not I need to be careful and, you know, lay off. Don't try and look directly behind myself. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, everything else is just a matter of polishing it so that you're not snapping around or doing things you don't want to do. Have fun.